Okay, so my big project this month is going to be reading It by Stephen King. It is huge. My copy is what? My copy is 1,138 pages, which is a lot. So I am going to break it up into manageable chunks and just hope for the best. Also, I love these old copies that have beautiful pictures of Stephen King on the back. And I just wanted to share this one with you. So my thought was piecing it out into chunks, maybe like four weeks in October, four chunks, maybe. Mm. So this is what I got. That's the end, if you couldn't tell. And I divided one, here we go. I divided one, 1,138 pages into four. So that rounds up to 285 pages every four, every week. Wish me luck. Okay, so it is October 4th. Currently in the middle of filming. But I wanted to update you on this beautiful tomb of a book. And that reminds me, I actually came to a realization while I've been carrying this guy around my home. I don't think Stephen King was intending to write a novel when he dived into it. I think he was planning on writing a weapon because there is no way that this book could not be used as some type of defense device. The corners, the thickness, like if someone got hit with this, it would hurt and it could do some damage. It's a hypothesis and I just wanted to bring it up. But into the contents of this book, I am about 182 pages into it. I was avoiding starting this, so I didn't really start it until yesterday. And I'm enjoying it. I didn't, I should have realized it because I think I've heard from somewhere, but I didn't fully realize that they're going back and forth between the main characters as children in the 50s and them as adults in the 80s. And I like it. I was just unprepared for it. Again, I've only watched the movies. I don't know too much about the book. I don't know how true it is or how true the movies were compared to the book. So it's interesting to see that dynamic. And it's interesting to go on the reverse side because usually I like reading the books before I watch the movies or the TV adaptations. There's not much to say right now. I've finished the interlude. Georgie's death scene, I read. I read the death scene, the first death scene 20 years later. And then of course, all the kids getting the call from Mike, from Mike. I'm starting to learn their names, give me a little bit. Ah, oh, it, it's, it's emotional. Reading that last scene, of the phone calls from Mike's perspective was a little bit heart-wrenching. Just the idea that 
No, he does not want to call his old friends because he knows they're not all going to make it. One of them or more than one of them will die. He's terrified to bring them home when they have these wonderful lives outside of Derry. After their horrific childhood there, horrific summer there, and just him stalling and stalling and stalling. That was so beautifully written and you just felt it as a reader or I did. And then knowing that he did, because you've already seen the scenes, you've already read the scenes. I thought that was a beautiful choice by Stephen King. And just getting into it. And then the next chapter itself is Mike's research on Derry, the city, and finding out all these awful things that happened even before the children were born. And I, it's beautiful. It, I really see why this is a famous and well-loved book. And I'm only at 180 pages into it. So I'm excited to see what more there is. I really wanna get to that first tab before the day's over. So that's about a hundred more pages to read today. And it will happen. So maybe I'll update you today. I might just update you tomorrow. So it is October 5th and I just completed 886, 286 pages of it. And I have to admit that last chapter kind of got to me. Um, Stephen King had a whole bunch of news articles depicting the police investigation of the missing child, Eddie Cochran, 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 Co Cochran, how are you pronounce his name? But basically the kid who bodily harmed Mike. And, um, I mean, at least from what I remember from the movies, you really hate this guy. There's no redeeming qualities. There's nothing to truly make him likable. But when you go through these news articles, Stephen King does what Stephen King does best. It makes Eddie human. I mean, his stepfather abused him. His stepfather killed his little brother. And then when Eddie is being killed by Pennywise, he shows his little brother coming to him all beat up from his stepfather. And yes, Stephen King in the end, gives his just desserts to the father, the stepfather. But I, I don't know, it's just, it's a very humanizing chapter that I wasn't expecting for this character. And I'm not excusing his behavior of bullying. It was completely awful. The scene where he goes to even more extreme bullying, to create permanent harm onto Billy's body is more, not even grotesque, but just completely unforgivable and more unforgivable than even just regular bullying, I guess. But not even that, it's just, it's just to the extreme and just awful. And that's what Stephen King was going for because you have one extreme to Billy being this awful awful bully and going further than the bullies even want to go and then you have the other extreme where his home life is unlivable literally where his little brother is hasn't survived it And it was just, 
a good humanizing chapter. So I'm done for the night. I've found that I can only go so far in it, mostly because I have an idea of what happens and I'm really putting some of these things off. I don't want to get too attached to the characters. I find myself not wanting to invest myself in the story for some reason. And at the same time, I know it will happen. So I'm like really pursuing this story slowly. So I'm not, I don't know. I just, I don't want to be too invested too fast and then be completely devastated by this book. I just finished chapter seven. So I'm on page 318. So really not that far from the last update I gave. However, <laughs> that chapter had some, um, some imagery in it, that's for sure. The, the way King is able to use descriptive words really brings the story to life and honestly truly allows the story to become the horror novel it is when Eddie was looking at the house the house on 29th Nybolt Street for the first time looking through the window the broken window to pretty grotesque man who supposedly either suffers from leprosy or suffers from overexposure to syphilis. The kids weren't sure and I'm not sure if they'd ever figure out. But the description of pretty much it or Pennywise was horrific and so beautiful. Honestly amazing and couldn't ask for anything more. I could not imagine myself being in middle school and seeing a sight like that. King is a sick, sick person sometimes. And I'm wondering what goes on in that brain of his. Nevertheless, I think I want to read one more chapter tonight. And I think I want to listen to it on audio. I will update you all tomorrow and have a wonderful night. Okay, it is October the 10th, and I actually got through a lot of Stephen King's It today. I read to chapter 15 on page 734. It was a lot. I finished like the middle part of When They Were Adults. So part two, and um, 
they finally met Mike. I don't know. I, I'm past the halfway mark. So that little halfway tab's done. And I hope by tomorrow I get to that tab. But it was definitely an interesting part. I mean, still some very intense scenes. They know that it is in the sewers. And Bill has discovered it's called a... Oh, I forget the name he called it, but it's a glamour and he thinks he has a ritual to destroy it. Very gross ritual. I'm really curious to see how Stephen King comes up with some of his ideas because they are interesting. That is to say the least. Oh, and also I think I said that I was... sad and I felt for um Henry the bully in a previous clip yeah that is gone I fully do not support that character at all this past reading has shown me that he is yes he's the product of his father completely but at the same time he's a bully and a complete dick yeah That, um, that backstory was not apparent in the shows and you definitely have to reach a certain point in the book to know more about Henry. I also think I called him Eddie, which is also wrong in that last clip. Editing Liz will help you out. I mean, I don't know... What else to say? The losers are together now, which is awesome. Definitely in the book, more so than in the shows, you learn a lot more about the losers and a lot more about their families. But that also is just a product of reading versus watching. You get a lot more into their minds. You get a lot more into their history I really liked the little key of the album of pictures being from Mike's dad and how he collected it and so that's a little bit of what Mike brings to the group and it's not just someone Stephen King added as a bonus character for fun halfway through so I that was a nice little tidbit that I haven't gotten before. Getting attached to the characters, and I didn't want to get attached to the characters, so thanks for that. The way that King goes between timelines, even within a short scene, like when the losers were having fun with each other and exploring their summer right before July 4th, but at the same time, Mike was running away from Henry and you're just having that back and forth like hey this is all the losers history with Henry but this is the reason Henry hates each of them but Mike in particular and then you get Henry's background you get Mike's background but this is what the losers are doing and then oh let's go back of what Mike was doing today Yes, it could get confusing, but the way King does it was seamless and you almost didn't know you were jumping through time just to get a little bit more of character description, character background, and the history of the book was very interesting. And he does it throughout the book and that's just one example that really stood out to me in this last section. We'll see if this continues. Uh, we're just building up to the climax right now climaxes i mean there's two of them there's one with the kids and one with them as adults so we'll see yeah i'm signing off for tonight i'm going to bed it is october 13th and i think it's been a couple of days since i updated you 
I am officially three thirds of the way through it. And that means I am, what? 842 pages in. I just reached chapter 18 or the bullseye. And honestly, I read the last two chapters on audio. I don't know, it, it, it was interesting. And I have to admit, I never realized I would hate two characters more than it or Pennywise. I don't know if that'll stay true, but let me tell you, Henry and Patrick, currently we're still in their childhood age saga, whatever you want to call it, but we're still in the loser's childhood and Henry and Patrick just, King has built up a burning hatred, at least in me, for these two characters. And I'm just gonna say it, these kids are like, what, 12, 13? And I was kind of happy that Pennywise killed Patrick. I felt like the character deserved it. I felt like he was very disturbed. I felt like he just didn't have any redemption in this book for me and when Pennywise killed him it just felt justified again it's king I feel like I'll regret my words later there's still what 300 pages in this book to read I feel like trying to remember the story from the movies isn't Patrick the one that res rescues Henry from the asylum. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm gonna regret these words later. But right now, the background King gives for these two characters, not a fan at all. But love the bond that King is giving losers still actually enjoying these timeline jumps that King is doing at least when you're reading the book the italicized version or the italicized words when you're reading it signal that you're in what the present when the losers are in their adult years, and then when the words are in normal and not italicized is when they're in their childhood and it's going back and forth. It's very easy to see the switch. However, when you're listening to it in audio, it's a little bit harder to distinguish, especially if you're not fully paying attention, which sometimes I'm not. and trips me up once in a while but that's also on me for not fully paying attention I know that's a warning if you're looking into audio versus physical book I'm excited to read the ending you have what I have one more chapter of this section July of 1958 which is part four and then I have part five, The Ritual of Chud, which has five chapters. And then I have a last interlude and the epilogue. So I'm in the home stretch, clearly, by three fourths of the way through. And hopefully I will finish it soon. My goal is to finish it before October 16th. But we'll see.
So it has been a day since I finished it and I just wanted a little bit of time to process all a thousand and one hundred words of this book before I kind of did a wrap up on what I thought. I started the book, I think it was October 8th, 2nd, October 2nd, earlier than that. And it took me a really long time to finish it, a lot longer than I thought it was going to. I finished it October 17th, today is the 18th, and part of the reason is because I was reading other books along with this one, including trying to finish War and Peace, which is an, another credibly long book. Why do I do this to myself? But that's beside the point. I thought it was another Stephen King book that really was a roller coaster for me. I really enjoyed how Stephen King did the time jumps and not just going back and forth between the kids as an adult, the losers as adults and the losers as kids, but also just within a scene between each character, whether it was Mike, Beverly, Harry, uh, antagonist, just to give more background on the scene and background on the characters themselves. I thought it was splendid. I thought King did a phenomenal job on that. And that is one reason, in my opinion, that it is very well loved. But there was also quite a bit that I did not enjoy. In itself, it has some very disturbing topics and that's not just child murder or a clown that even murders kids. It's just <sighs> topics that I didn't think needed to be added to make this book more disturbing. The book was already disturbing enough. You had elements that I think King added just for the effect of it or just that he thought needed to be added when it didn't. And again, all my opinion, you can agree, disagree, doesn't matter. But in the end, I absolutely adored the ending. There was one ending in particular I did not like when the losers were kids. But when they were adults, the way King let them all leave Derry and the way that they were all forgetting but being sad and truly the idea that they're losing their childhood and they know they're losing their childhood for the last time. And that's not just their childhood home, their childhood memories, but their friends. And it's really, truly bittersweet. And it rounded out this idea that I've been having in my head that it is about childhood and innocence and the loss thereof and what happens when you forget what childhood is about and what happens when children don't get to have that innocence growing up. And then trying to regain it as well when you're an adult. You know, stacked in with a whole bunch of horror elements. And I just, it was phenomenal to read and I loved it. However, I don't think I'd ever pick it up again I read it once and I think I'll be done forever. I would recommend it to people who have not read it before. If you think just watching some of the movies or TV shows is enough, mm -mm. you are missing quite a bit 
And that ending, it makes it. That ending, the last, honestly, 10 pages, I think makes the whole 1,100 pages for me. But those are my thoughts on Stephen King's It. And I hope you enjoyed this vlog, however scattered it was because of how long it was. I'm sorry about that. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope you're having a spooky October, I guess. Thank you for watching. Bye.